Jason Aaron back live with Be Terrific from CE Week 2016. I'm surprised I even made it back. Uh, because I just had a chance to take that X scooter out for a little spin around Metropolitan Pavilion. Uh, I didn't crash, and security didn't throw me out. So two very, very positive things. Good. Early here on a Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, right? Uh, no, it's Thursday. Today's Thursday. Yeah. Okay, today is Thursday. Day two of CE Week. We're just plugging along. We're wow. just chugging along, trying to make it. And we're here. You know, I talk all the time about how I love talking to people who make products that I use. Uh, things in the real world, and Seagate, one yes. of the most well-known names in storage. Uh, welcome, first of all. Thank you very much, Jason. Great to be here. What do you have? What do you? What's what's new in the hard drive space? Before we even get into your products, talk about storage a little bit. Thirty thousand foot view. Where where yeah. is storage right now? Well, storage, or I should say, data, is actually exploding. So we continue to see incredible growth in the consumer market. So I head up the consumer business at Seagate. And then we also have the enterprise business. And both are doing extremely well in terms of growth of storage because from consumers to enterprise, people are taking more photos, uh, taking more videos. And the resolution, just as you can see here at CE Week, is getting greater and greater with 360 degree cameras, 4K everywhere. Um, and that's consuming more and more storage. It's creating more data. So just in my group alone, we're seeing about a 30% growth per year, which is actually quite high. And everything is moving to the cloud, which is very exciting. Now, um, I mean, is that a good thing? It's a great thing. Because on face value, it means consumers are purchasing less hard drives, right? Ah, but that's actually, um, uh, it's 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 uh, I have a, I have a prop here that I could show you. Oh, I like props. So um, this is a 10 terabyte helium filled drive. First and of all, how did you put 10 terabytes in there? Well, I mean that's the insane thing, right? If you if you go back to 1980, we had one gigabyte drive that cost forty thousand dollars. In 2007, Crazy. we finally got to one terabyte, and it was still very expensive. And here we are nine years later with 10 terabytes, and Where it's because of the way? evolution. This it's weighs less than I would expect it to. Yeah. And there's a regular platter drive, regular spinning drives. Yeah. It's just filled with helium. So you can see it's sealed. And these are being sold like crazy to CSPs, cloud service providers. Right? Ah. Because when you think about it, like whether you're Microsoft or Google or AWS, Amazon's web services, they're buying boatloads of these kind of drives, which are guaranteed to operate 24 by 7 for five years. And they usually go longer than that. And when these data centers have 15 million or more of these spinning disks, you multiply 10 terabytes times that, you're talking about a whole lot of exabytes. And, and the beauty part is, at 10 terabytes, just physical space in a data center is taking up it's a lot It's critical, less. right? So you need low power and you need lots of capacity. And flash plays a big role in the cloud too because you need a lot of input outputs per second, IOPS. And so what these data centers are doing is putting flash on the front end and then these kind of drives on the back end, if you will. And so uh, that, that growth is probably our, our greatest growth that we're seeing in the storage business. Um, and you know, you probably put a lot of stuff in the cloud you don't even know about, right? Right, I mean, yeah, certainly. I mean, I, I have a Dropbox account and, and right. a Google Drive account, and I mean, it's, you yeah. know. But even, even things like you know, Nest, you're using different IoT devices, right? And all that data is going into their service and most of the time they're using one of the big three platforms, whether it's Google or Microsoft or, or, or Amazon. I mean, this is amazing. First of all, that you fit 10 terabytes into here. Uh, it almost feels like a toy, like I don't even, you know. Yeah. It's not real. Well, this, this is something that looks more like a toy, right? So this is using another technology called shield, shielded magnetic recording. Um, and what it does is it overlays the tracks, kind of like shingles on a roof. And so what we're able to do in seven millimeters is pack in two terabytes of data. So you know, wow. consumers can buy these things starting at 69 bucks for one terabyte and 99, or you can usually find it for 89 for two terabytes. And you can feel how light that is, right? I mean, this way, is not, this is something, you know. Exactly, exactly. And gone. Boom. And regular right. USB 3 cable on the back. Yep. And that's it. That's it. So this way, this is ounces. This is not, I wish exactly. we had a scale here. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So you know, it, there's always going to be a need for local storage for those applications that require the performance. Like gaming is a great example. You can't necessarily have that real-time interaction and those big data sets through the cloud. 
right? right. Our, our average download speed in the US is about uh, 15 to 20, 20 megabits per second. Our average upload speed as of yesterday in the United States is only 6.2 megabits per second. Slow. Slow, right? But I mean, still, for a lot of applications, it works just fine, like for all these different connected devices we have that are collecting data, whether it's your Fitbit device or you know your, your other connected devices. Yeah, and you know, of course, being in New York, we have faster speeds, but I, you know, I work with video, you can't, you can't put video in the cloud. Right. So, you know, I have an 18 terabyte RAID on my desk, and then you exactly. have other drives and, and docks for, for yeah. naked drives like this. Yeah, and, and, and so the other thing that we do is we focus on the new kinds of connectivity that exist. So uh, at the NAB show, we introduced our new Thunderbolt 3 line of products. We call it our big products, right? So it's 12 big. 96 terabytes of 40 gigabit per second. You can edit multiple 4K streams, 8K streams, and, and have it be real time, right? Which so is incredible. That's something that, at least currently, you can't do in the cloud, so there's always going to be those applications. But then for backing up or sharing maybe a lower resolution version of that movie you just shot, you know, the cloud is great for that, right? right. And uh, of course, since it's sitting here, let's talk about this. What does what that sleek looking hard drive? So, you know, yesterday we introduced three new products, and you think about like your notebook when you have it at home, you probably connect it to other things. Or maybe your notebook, if, if you're buying today's notebooks, they have less and less ports on them because they're thinner. Right. Well, Apple decided uh, we don't need ports anymore. We don't need ports, right? I mean, that's a perfect product. Like the MacBook has one USB Type 3 port. Right. And it has. And if you want to power your laptop, well, right. then you're out of luck right. for everything else. Well, we have a solution for that. And we Thank have a solution for, for other just generic notebooks that have less capacity and less ports. And we started to see this how, like for example, at Amazon, if you bought a desktop uh, storage device, a USB hub was like your next purchase, okay? Because you, know, you connect that in, but I, now I need more uh, ports. Space, right, yeah. So we saw this and we said, hey, let's listen to the customer and let's create a product that integrates those two things together. And so yesterday we introduced our Backup Plus Hub. It's a, a device that's four, six, or eight terabytes. So eight terabyte. Uh, uh, starts at 139, and it integrates two USB uh, 3.0 ports. And then, right. how do I connect this to my computer? So you connect it to your computer through another USB port. So you connect that to your computer, and then you can connect your mobile device, uh, your flash drives, uh, or even other hard drives to these ports. And you can charge your devices this way. And this might be up on your desk if you have like gaming PCs. Um, you know, you don't want to necessarily reach down there, right? So it can work for your solutions on your desk. Um, and you know, most of that is notebooks, but it can help expand your notebook uh, and give you lots of storage. I mean, that would be great for someone like me. I have, uh, I have the Mac Pro uh, garbage can version. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, has a lot of ports on it. Yeah. Um, you know, six Thunderbolt ports and four USB 3 ports. Right. But at the same time, I don't want it on my desk. I don't want anything on my desk. So I have it in a bookshelf to the side. Right. But then my keyboard, um, you know, I like the wired keyboards. I don't mess around with the wireless yeah. stuff. Don't have to I, deal with charging batteries and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So, so now I have to figure out a way to get these things back into the computer. Yeah. I'm the guy who now had to buy a USB hub and it's on my desk. But this would be such a dual purpose. Right. Uh, product because I mean first of all this will look great on my desk yeah it's a, it's clearly a nice design and now I got two ports that would be enough for my control surface my keyboard and yep. that's it good to go yep I and still have it a can, wireless mouse it can suck your content off of your phone too right so you know we have so much photo and video uh, and it can pull that off and store it on here as well what kind of smart utilities come with that. I, I have to be honest, I'm, I fear those things. So usually the first thing I do when I get a hard drive is reformat it. I don't care what's on it. I don't want the utilities on right. anything. But I mean, what, what do you sort of offer the consumer from that? Well, we, it comes with software that uh, we call the dashboard. And so it has a very simple out-of-box experience that we've just changed across all of our products globally. So it just a couple of steps. Uh, first thing is um, you know, your, your name and an email. That way you get your warranty. That's easy. Right? But we don't ask all kinds of questions. It's really simple. It's just like a mobile app, right? Um, and then you can get some free uh, cloud uh, storage as well from uh, OneDrive from Microsoft. So you can have 200 gigabytes for free for a couple of years. That's nice. If you want it, you can skip it too, right? Um, and then you can get backup software. We call it our dashboard. Um, and that will take your, the content off of your PC and replicate it here. Now, for formatting, um, the drives come pre-formatted. 
Uh, the drive you're holding in your hand comes pre-formatted pre mostly for, for Windows machines. Um, we do have another product that we call Backup Plus Hub for Mac. So it's a different ID. Um, it's a nice white design. There you, you go. Should check it out. Um, and uh, that's pre-formatted for, for Mac. So it makes it really easy for consumers who don't want to deal with any of that out-of-box experience or other software. And if I am the consumer, I went to the store and you only have one in stock, I can take it and I can reformat it. Absolutely, the other way. yeah. Yeah. All right. So before I let you go, I want to ask you. I want to ask you the tough questions. All right. All right. And this isn't gotcha journalism, but you all know, right. got to get deep here. I remember about five years ago, two terabytes was sort of that sweet spot when you were buying these three and a half inch drives. Yep. And they started coming out with the three and the four, and the sort of accepted practice on the street was that you would never buy larger than two terabytes because there was just too much storage, and it was too volatile, and it would break, and then you'd be out that much data. And if you, you know, four terabytes of stuff could be a whole lot of stuff, depending on what you have on there. Right. So people wouldn't do that. Now, why am I then going to buy a 10 terabyte storage? What's changed? Well, so for example, you have an 18 terabyte. Uh, well, I do, but it's six drives. <laughs> it's six drives, right? Right. So now with, you know, 10 terabytes, you could have just two disks and you could have redundant 10 terabytes, right? Or actually a little more than that. So depending upon what rage you use. Um, so it really helps to increase the capacity and the reliability. And on top of that, with these enterprise drives that you know, will run for 10 years constantly, and if you do that with flash, you could run into the, the wear issue, right? A lot of people see the prices of flash coming down. I'm a big flash guy, I love flash. But there's enterprise flash, which costs a lot more than consumer flash. Um, so it's all about giving the consumer more capacity for their 4K videos that they're shooting and today. So the quality's gotten better, the drive quality. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, but I think even with Flash, everybody likes redundancy, right? Yeah. You want to copy on your Flash, you want to copy in the cloud. You want to copy on a hard drive, you want to copy on another hard drive. And that's something that I think is just good practice, especially in the media space and around here even, we've been talking to some production folks, and I can't believe how many copies they want to have. And it's really important, right? Because that's their, you know, they yeah. just shot this incredible video, right? And they want to copy it to a Lacie Rugged RAID device, and then they want to copy it to another one. Lacie is another product line that we have, and that's really for the creative professional. So even in a small, little, ruggedized, dustproof, waterproof uh, drive, you get two drives in there. Um, and so you can have, you know, two terabytes that are redundant. With what kind of read-write speeds? Uh, you can get about 130, 150 megabytes per second it's off more, of that. More than enough for HD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we also have our, our Thunderbolt 3 products that integrate Flash. So we, have, uh, uh, we also have a Flash device that's USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second. We announced that at CES. So we do Flash, we do hard drives. It's all about protecting your data, and that's really what Seagate is all about. That's our vision, is really helping you capture, protect forever, uh, that precious data. And where do I find out more about Seagate? Seagate.com or Lacie.com. That's for the consumer stuff and all the enterprise stuff is on Seagate.com. And what's the best way to buy it? You can buy Seagate products and Lacie products pretty much anywhere. So we're in New York City here. You can go to B&H or Adorama or you can go to Amazon.com. Uh, you can go to pretty much Best Buy. Any, any retailer globally carries Seagate products. That's amazing. You heard it here first. New products, check these out. I'm excited. I love storage. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Be Terrific. Jason Aaron here in New York City live at CE Week 2016. We'll be right back.